apologetics must, must be a part of church discipleship. That's why morality is relative in Americans throughout the West today, because man now determines truth. And I believe that that's why the nation is in the state it's in, because uh, they don't know the Word of God, and because the church has failed, in a sense, to hold forth the Word of God in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation. Welcome to Heritage of Truth. Today, our guest is Becky Harling. Welcome. Hi, Jeannie. This is so fun to be with you. Yes. Well, Becky is an old friend, and it's so great to have you. And her book, her new book is called, Who Do You Say That I Am? A Fresh Encounter for Deeper Faith. Yes. Now, this is a Bible study, right? An eight-week study? It is. I'm so excited about it, Jeannie, because ever since I was 27 years old, I wanted to write a Bible study workbook. Mm -hmm. And so now after several books, I've finally done it. <laughs> <laughs> this is on the, the I Am Statements of Jesus, is that yeah. correct? So what it does is it combines the most pivotal questions that Jesus asks. Jesus asks phenomenal questions, and I mm -hmm. love his questions because they really cause us to think. Mm -hmm. And so I took some of the questions that he asked, mm -hmm. and then I matched up the answers in his I Am Statements. And so it mm -hmm. takes the reader through those so that the reader can really take a look at what do I believe about Jesus? What do I think mm. about who he is? Now, what prompted you to write this book? A Crisis of Faith. <laughs> okay, so tell us about that. Yeah, I, you know, I married my husband at age 21. We were in ministry. Ministry went really well. In a lot of ways, we climbed the corporate ladder of ministry. You know, every church <laughs> yeah. grew and doubled and tripled and all this kind of stuff. And then I reached a pivotal point where everything in my life started simultaneously falling apart. Mm. Praise God, not my marriage, but other things. Right. Uh, I was diagnosed with breast cancer. I began to really struggle with the fact that I had been sexually abused as a child. Mm. And I had always run from that. I had never faced it. I had mm. never gone for counseling. I just ran faster and harder, you know, to serve mm -hmm. Jesus. And right. so I started dealing with cancer, the sexual abuse memories, really some in deep anxiety, mm -hmm. a lot of extended family issues. My extended family began to fall apart. And in the middle of all that, I just remember crying out to God saying, who are you? Because mm -hmm. you're not behaving like the God I used to serve. It's almost like I felt... I deserved better than this from God. You know, mm. I'd been pretty faithful and kind mm. of like, I don't want to deal with all of this. And then I began to realize it's possible that I'm worshiping my own image of Jesus Christ mm -hmm. in a, kind of an American version of Jesus Christ. You know, right. uh, the Jesus that's going to bless me and give me a secure home. The Jesus that's going to make, you know, everything go well in my family. He's going to bless me financially. He's going to give me a white picket fence. I'm never going to have to, you know, struggle with anything. That's kind of the Jesus I wanted to serve. And mm -hmm. Jesus began saying, you know what? Why don't you go back to the Gospels and mm -hmm. reanalyze who I say I am? Mm -hmm. And so I decided to lay aside every presupposition that I had about Jesus, everything I'd ever been taught. And I said, Lord, I'm going to start over. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to read through the Gospels. And I did that for four years straight, wow. saying, show me who you really are. Because if I'm going to do this, I want to worship the real you mm -hmm. and not some figment of my imagination. So that's the basis, the backstory of this book. Wow. And that's a really good thing to do, to really review. What, what is our faith in? Is it, who is it in? Is, who is this God that we believe in? Yes. Yeah, that's a really good so idea. there's so many misconceptions out there, you know, and mm -hmm. I think people are a little afraid of a crisis of faith. Mm -hmm. You know, like, I want to decide what I believe. I want to believe it for the rest of my life. I never want to question. But most of us aren't like that. Mm -hmm. So it's really good. A crisis of faith can be pivotal mm -hmm. in helping you move your head knowledge about Jesus really down deeply into your heart where Absolutely. he becomes everything. Mm-hmm. And he does, doesn't he? Yes, he, he yeah. does. Yeah. And it's amazing. And so many people go through crises. It's like, where is God? Where is God? And they turn away from faith. Yes. And yes. that's tragic. 
Yeah, it is. And and I think that that's a fear issue too, Jeannie, because mm -hmm. I think it's like they don't want to open their Bibles and really look at what Jesus says about them. It's kind of like, well, uh, you know, like I often get the question, and you probably do too, well, if God is good, then why is there suffering? Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, like, let's take a look at that. Or one one question that I get asked, well, if God is good, why is there poverty? Well, mm -hmm. Jesus is the one that said, hey, if you have two shirts, give one away. Mm -hmm. So we can't blame Jesus for poverty because yeah. most of us have more than two shirts, right? Yeah. I mean, so there's this disconnect sometimes. I mean, some of the things that Jesus says are challenging to our Western mindset. Mm -hmm. And we have to take a hard look at those and decide what are we going to do with what Jesus said. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that happens with suffering is it helps to build our character, helps us to draw nearer to him. And I know my times of suffering, have, they've been almost unbearable, some of them. But when I came out on the other side, I would not have traded them because right. of what I gained from it. Yeah, that is a part of our call to follow Jesus. Mm -hmm. You know, Jesus is the one that said, in this world, you will have suffering, mm -hmm. but don't worry, I've overcome the world, you know? And he said, take up your cross and follow me, mm -hmm. you know? And oftentimes when we follow Jesus, you know, we want the assurance that we're going to go to heaven, right? So we think, okay, that's what this is about. I say the prayer. <laughs> I ask Jesus into my heart. I'm in. I don't have to worry about it. You know what I mean? But our salvation is to be a life of transformation. Mm -hmm. And oftentimes that involves some measure of suffering. Mm -hmm. and, and, and in that time, we get to join Jesus in that. And that mm -hmm. is a part of him shaping us into the image of who he is. Right, exactly. And part of what you do is you go and share the gospel in other countries. Can you tell us we about that? We do, yes. I love that we get to do that, Jeannie. Um, my husband, Steve Harling, is the president of Reach Beyond, which mm -hmm. was formerly HCJV. Mm -hmm. um, and so what we do is we seek to be the voice and hands of Jesus around the world. Mm -hmm. And we are primarily targeted on the least reach people groups mm. because we began to realize that there are many people groups who don't have any access to the gospel. Mm -hmm. And Revelation 7-9 uh, is just such a powerful verse. And in that, John, the writer of Revelation, is standing there and he sees people from every tribe, nation, and tongue. And how will those people be there if we don't tell them and give them mm -hmm. access to the gospel. And so we want to be a part of helping that happen. And so uh, rather than, we, so we go overseas and we help partners put in radio stations. Radio is such a powerful tool mm -hmm. where you can reach thousands of people at one time. And also there's so many illiterate people in the yes. world. Radio is really helpful. It is. It's so powerful. And mm -hmm. then we seek to be the hands of Jesus. So we do a lot of community development, a lot of clean water and wells mm -hmm. and medical teams. Mm -hmm. And so Steve and I get to travel around the world encouraging these teams, raising awareness. Um, you know, so some, some of the trips we're hiking into a jungle. Yeah, sometimes we have to get our hands dirty. Oh, don't we? yeah, we do. Yeah. <laughs> and then other times, you know, we're sitting down with teams and helping with conflict management. Other mm -hmm. times we're doing a deeper life conference with teens. Other mm -hmm. times we're visiting different partners and trying to encourage them. So yeah, I get to travel around the world with Steve and it's a lot of fun. In fact, New Year's Eve, we had dinner together, Steve and I did, and we were listing all the countries we had been to in the last year. And we came up with the fact that we had been to 16 countries in 15 months. Wow. <laughs> I was like, wow, I have a legitimate reason to be tired. <laughs> And jet lagged. <laughs> yes, a little bit. But anyway, we love what we do. Yeah. And you just got back from South Africa? We it? did. We just yeah. got back from Cape Town. Um, yeah. And God is doing incredible things around the world. And I, that's why this message is so important. Mm -hmm. Because Jesus is revealing himself all over the world. Mm -hmm. And it's, I mean, the stories are incredible. You know, I, I think, for example... So many people are a little bit worried about the refugee crisis, mm -hmm. but the refugee crisis is part of God's plan because he's 
bringing people to us. I mean, they're right at our doorstep. And it's mm -hmm. so fun because it's happening all over the world. Yes. And so it brings a lot of the refugee crisis, uh, brings a lot of suffering for refugees, but it also gives us access to people groups we've never had access to before. Mm -hmm. And we can love on them. Mm -hmm. And we can give them blankets. We can give them clean water. We can give their kids vaccinations and we can share Jesus with them right. because they see the love of Christ in us. That's great. So is there anything in this book that you'd especially like to share with our viewers? Wow, there's a lot in this book. This is one of my favorite books because I love the I am statements of Jesus. I love the way Jesus asks such profound questions. One of my favorite I am statements of Jesus is where Jesus says, I am the bread of life. Mm -hmm. And you know, uh, I think for women especially, I know for me, when Steve and I got married, we both brought you know, a lot of neediness to our marriage. Mm -hmm. I had needs from my childhood. In fact, I always laughed because what I wanted in my marriage was security. I wanted the white picket fence, the forever home, and look what I'm doing now, Jeannie. So God has a sense of humor, right? Um, and Steve brought needs, you know. And, and in our marriage, when we began having the crises, me with cancer, him really having a hard time in one of the churches we serve, we began to realize, you know what, we cannot meet each other's needs like we would like to. And during those years... Jesus as the bread of life began meeting every one of my needs. You know, mm -hmm. Jesus, there's always more than enough love with Jesus. Right. So when you feel like your significant other, your spouse, your, you know, your children are letting you down in the love department, you can always go back to Jesus and say, hey, I need more. <laughs> you know, I just need more mm -hmm. of this love you promised. There's, and mm -hmm. so I, I love his bread of life statement. I love the picture of him as the vine. Yeah. You know, where Jesus says, I'm the vine. You're just the branch. And do you know how many times I have to remind myself of that, Jeannie? <laughs> I look at some of the challenges we face and I mm -hmm. think, I can't do this. It's too big. Yeah. It's too hard. You know, and Jesus says, you know what, Becky, you don't have to do it. Mm -hmm. You just focus on abiding in me and I'll do the work through you. Because right. I'm the vine, you're only the branch. Right. And the branch is never stressed. Right. You know, the branch is never wiggy because things aren't going right. You know, the branch just produces lots of fruit, right? Mm -hmm. Right. And so I, I love the practicality of mm -hmm. Jesus just being so ready to meet our deepest needs. Yeah, exactly. Well, can you say a word of encouragement to someone who is struggling right now, maybe with a crisis of faith? Yeah, I would talk to you as somebody that's had a crisis of faith. You know what? Even John the Baptist had a crisis of faith. In fact, in one of the Gospels, it talks about where John was thrown in prison for his faith. And he sent messengers to Jesus and said, are you really the one we're waiting for or is there someone else? And Jesus sent word back, hey, the blind have received sight, the lame have walked, and, and he was the Messiah. And so if John the Baptist can have a crisis of faith, it's okay for you to have a crisis of faith. But my encouragement to you is don't walk away. Walk towards the word of God. Open it up and say, hey, Jesus, who are you really? Because that's what I want to know. I need to know who are you really? Jesus asked one of the most powerful and pivotal questions to his disciples when he said, who do you say that I am? And when you answer that question, your faith will go a lot deeper and it'll be stronger to sustain you through the crises of life. I know life is hard. I've been there. I've lived through it myself. And I just want to say, when you come out the other side, it's worth the effort you put into trying to figure out your own faith and make it your own. And he says, if you seek me You'll with all your me. heart, you're going to find me. That's yeah. right. That's yeah. right. Well, where can people find you online? Oh, I would love to have them visit me. You can become my Facebook friend. You follow me on Facebook, follow me on Twitter, follow me on Instagram, and then visit my website, beckyharling.com. We have a bunch of free gifts up right now on my website, so please do stop by. We have some coloring pages that go through the I Am Statements of Jesus, have a couple other things up there that you would enjoy, and uh, we'd just love to have you visit me there. Okay, well, thanks, Becky, for thanks, being our guest. Thanks, This was awesome.
I know whom I have believed.